Stuart Appleby shoots history with a final round 59 to come from behind and win the inaugural Greenbrier Classic. Settle in as we rewind the week with the latest edition of Monday Backspin from PGATour.com. A storied venue adds another historic chapter with an unbelievable finish on the old white course. Hello everyone, I'm Casey Black. Stuart Appleby started off Sunday seven shots off the lead, but with his final round 59, he comes from behind to win by one stroke over Jeff Overton. With this birdie putt on the par 3 18th, Appleby sinks it and seals the deal, becoming only the fifth player in the history of the PGA Tour to shoot a 59. But Jeff Overton was still on the course and needed this long birdie putt on the 18th to force a playoff. He just misses to finish one shot behind Appleby for his third runner-up finish this year. In the meantime, Appleby, who is waiting on the driving range, had this to say after he found out he won. Official? Official. Now I can wipe my brow. Andy, finally, mate. So let's take a look at Appleby's impressive final round. Nine birdies, three of which came on the final three holes. One eagle on the par 5 12th. He only had 23 putts on the day, hit 83% of greens in regulation, 79% of fairways, while averaging nearly 310 yards off the tee. The Aussie, who has now claimed his ninth win on tour, his first since 2006, joins the likes of only four other players to shoot a 59 on the PGA Tour. Al Geigberger did it back in the second round of the 1977 Memphis Classic. Chip Beck went sub-60 at the Sunrise Golf Club in Las Vegas back in 1991. And David Duval pulled it off in the final round of the 1999 Bob Hope Classic. And Paul Guidos shot a 59 this year at the TPC Deer Run in the first round of the John Deere Classic. And with this win this week, Stuart Appleby earned a spot in the World Golf Championship's Bridgestone Invitational next week. And although Appleby was able to pull off that 59, there were a couple of players who were flirting with 59 earlier in the week. Take Saturday, D.A. Points posted his career-best 9-under 61 to move to 15-under, three shots behind Jeff Overton heading into the final round. He was hoping to become the fifth player to card a 59 in the history of the PGA Tour. Sitting at 10 under par through 16 holes, points buried any hope of a 59 with a three-putt bogey on the par 5 17th and a par on the 18th. J.B. Holmes looked like he could break 60 on Saturday, but with a bogey on the par 3 third hole, a missed birdie putt from nearly four feet on the 11th, and a missed eagle putt on the par 5 17th, Holmes ended up with a career-best 10 under 60. Bob Stevens is at the old white course and now has a look back at the inaugural Greenbrier Classic. Bob? My remembrances of this first Greenbrier Classic are all about people who, well, love the game but are not necessarily PGA Tour pros. Jim Justice, the big man with the big dream to bring this tournament here in the first place. Jerry West, an icon in these West Virginia hills, came back. Arnold Palmer, who, well, made his first check here, playing against Sam Snead back in the day. Those are some of the folks who've been a part of this tournament. Then you've got your Carrie Underwood and, and Brad Paisley and Reba McIntyre and Rascal Flatts. Where else are you going to find them at the same venue but here at the Greenbrier? And then, of course, there are the passionate fans around here, folks who wanted to come out and see the PGA Tour, many of them for the very first time. I think they're going to come back in year two. I think a lot more golfers are going to come back, and they're going to bring other golfers with them. Field should be even better next year once word gets out about how much fun these guys have had playing this week. And certainly, there'll be more fans here next year as well. This is a tournament that is growing and growing and growing, and it will be even better in 2011. Thank you, Bob. And get ready next week for the World Golf Championship's Bridgestone Invitational. You can watch the opening round coverage on Golf Channel starting at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And don't forget, for live scoring and video highlights right at your fingertips anytime, head to PGATour.com.